All right, so we're out for a test drive in this uh, 2003 Mercury Sable. Customer complaint is uh, low power, poor performance, and it can't make it up a hill. Now, I'm just checking out the oxygen sensors here on this test drive in closed loop. What do we have here? We got bank one, sensor one, switching normally. Bank one, sensor two is mimicking that as well. Bank two, sensor one, uh, looks like it's moving quite alright as well. Bouncing around between uh, low and high voltage. Rich lean. Bank two, sensor two is mimicking that as well. So we don't have uh, we don't have any catalytic converters left. Um, it feels like a clogged cat. And what we're going to do is go back and do some back pressure testing on each bank and see what we can find. Back pressure test. O3 Mercury Sable. Rear cylinder head. Go ahead. That was 5 PSI at idle, which is way out of spec. Alrighty, so we talked to the customer. We told them that both of their catalytic converters were dying, but one is uh, the one that's clogged, causing the performance issues. So they approved us to replace one of the cats and I don't blame them it's a super expensive job so I imagine I kinda kinda wanna do one thing at a time here so we got a Walker catalytic converter and I'm super disappointed in it. it was complete junk it came with all these small spot welds that were broken so I had to add welds because this whole heat shield was rattling like something fierce right out of the box so I had to redo the welds and uh, weld it in place, you know, for like 400 bucks too, you figured you'd get a little bit better product, but the, the runner welds to the flange. Ew. I've actually gotten new parts from Advance Auto, Dorman, Walker, and uh, I've had to weld brand new welds because they had pinholes or, you know, what have you. Or they didn't complete a weld or they burned through. The quality control has really gone down. But yeah, so no more rattling heat shield. And uh, we'll get this cat on the car. I also got a DPFE sensor because the one on the car has been blown out by black back pressure. Uh... Got a new oxygen sensor because the one that's on there is pretty ugly. Um, and actually got the intake manifold and throttle body gaskets in case uh, I find myself removing the intake manifold for better access to this. They say to take the cow off in the wiper transmission. Um, we're going to try that first, but at least I have the parts here in case I have to dig any further. This is just a three-way cat here. Alright, I know that we diagnosed this catalytic converter by using live data of the oxygen sensor switching and uh, exhaust back pressure testing. But the probably third and final way that I would test uh, a catalytic converter to see if it's functioning properly is doing a um, digital infrared thermometer test at the inlet and outlet of the catalytic converter. All right, so this is the inlet of the cat. This was from a uh, Mini Cooper. Exhaust goes through, the catalyst happens, and goes through the outlet. Now, the way that a cat works Basically, measuring here and measuring here should be a 100 degree difference and it should be hotter at the outlet. Now, that is just a generic number 
but the fact remains it's supposed to be hotter at the outlet on a good cat that is working and the catalyst process is happening on the inside so uh, say for example at 2500 rpm uh, and this cat has lit off and it's hot enough say we measure 450 degrees on the inlet we should have roughly 500 up on the outlet side um, anything less I would be concerned so that is the third and final way of testing a catalytic converter it's quick and easy uh, I typically use two thermometers to average the temperatures out to make sure I have an accurate reading and one gun isn't working uh, lesser than the other or the readings aren't off incredibly because these things are not cheap you know, cat catalytic converters are hundreds of dollars, so you want to be sure with your diagnosis. So we like to test and not guess. All right, guys. Well, thank you for watching another video of mine. I really appreciate it. I know I am not the best editor, but, you know, time heals all things, including my editing skills. Uh, but hopefully I got the point across of how I go about diagnos diagnosing a cat, and, you know, you can utilize some of the same... Uh, processes to make sure that you make the right call whether it's a customer's car or your own car for that matter um, in the comments if you have another testing procedure again I'm all about learning so you know what's better than learning from a bunch of other technicians or other experienced people so if you have another method feel free to leave it in the comments and let me know uh, how you like to proceed with a problem like this uh, I got lucky because of the poor performance complaint from the customer and the lack of power usually you know if you've ever felt one you kinda get a feel for it for what a car feels like with a clogged cap but you know I always like to test to confirm um, yeah let me know what you think about the process I know the videos aren't that great yet but I hope the content is starting to get there for you um, so thank you very much